Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Lang with Be Part of the Music, and I want to welcome you to our latest webinar in the COVID series called Recruitment and Retention in the COVID World. If you can hear me and see me, make sure that you put it in the chat box so that we know that you're on board and seeing and hearing everything that you need to see and hear, because we have a lot, a lot of great stuff to share today. We wanna welcome everyone who's here in the chat room. We also wanna welcome all our friends on Facebook Live. We had over 2,500 people RSVP for today's event, and we only had room for 1,000 in the room. And we wanna start by sincerely apologizing to anybody who reserved a spot but couldn't get in the room. Um, and we wanna welcome you on Facebook Live, or if you're watching this in the future after the webinar has already been recorded and released, which will happen tomorrow. Want to get a couple of housekeeping things out of the way. First of all, we are recording this for future use and will be sent to you along with your professional development certificate, either later today or tomorrow. Our staff are working hard on that and as diligent as always, and you'll get that just as soon as we can get these materials uploaded to the web. We also want to let you know that this webinar does have a chat box feature and if you've not already opened the chat box, that's the way that you can communicate with not only our staff and myself during the actual webinar, but you can communicate with your colleagues from all over the country and believe it or not, the world. We have folks from Australia, we have folks from Europe, and we have folks from Canada signed on today. This has truly become an international community for the next hour. And then finally, we want to ask you to download today's slide deck at bpotm.org. That's bpotm.org. I'm not going to lie when I tell you that this is going to be chock full of information that you won't be able to keep up with if you don't have that slide deck. In preparing this, I was just almost overwhelmed with the amount that I wanted to share in the limited time that we had to share it. So if you download that slide deck, you'll not only get all the slides that you're about to see with all the information that you're about to get, but you have a place where you can take notes and customize and personalize this to your program and to suit your needs. And then finally, before we begin, I want to thank all our sponsors that you see at the bottom, the Alfred Company Band app, Music and Arts, Music for All, my music staff, Smart Music, um, the folks at Temasek Infield, uh, Van Doren and our good friends at World Projects. Um, all of these folks have banded together, so to speak, um, to support, be part of the music and let us bring these incredible events to you in service of you in celebration. First of all, can you all hear me now? All of a sudden my mic just went. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I can't believe uh, we're having a little technical glitch with um, the Zoom software. But if you can hear me now, um, just uh, let me know that you can hear me now and we will take it from there. First of all, Let's get fired up, baby. I mean, this is not a time for doom and gloom. This is not a time to be down. This is not a time to be scared. This is a time to celebrate music education. And I believe we might just be in the renaissance of music education. I genuinely believe that. Back in 2008, I, I said to my wife, when we were in the height of the economic crisis, I said, it's a bad time to own a restaurant. That is for sure. And that is true today in 2020. But the good part is, if you can survive the next three months, you will be in the best position to be successful that you've ever been in the history of your business. See, the thing is, everyone's going to come out of this and they're going to be hungry and they're going to be itching to go out. And if your doors are open, if you are able to survive, if you are the one that is still around, then people will be flooding to your doorstep to celebrate that you were able to survive. And I feel that way about music education. That, unfortunate as it may be, the crisis of 2008, things like yearbook disappeared, Pottery Club disappeared, things um, like activities and even sports were eliminated because there just wasn't the budget to support this. And I suspect that whether it be health concern or financial concern, that that is going to happen once again in 2020 and 2021 and beyond. And the thing is, even jobs will disappear because the jobs that will be held by teenagers now either won't exist or will be held by their parents in the future. So what we've got is a, a large body of kids that isn't shrinking, a large group of students that isn't contracting, a large body of students that are searching for something to do with fewer activities and fewer choices. And music, music is in a prime opportunity 
prime space, a prime moment to actually grab these kids and grow our way out of this problem. And I will tell you flat out that if we don't grow through this crisis, it's nobody's fault but our own. We've got just as many kids tomorrow as we did today, but they've got fewer activities to do. We've got just as many kids tomorrow as we do today, but they've got fewer jobs to have. We got just as many kids today, tomorrow as we did today, but they have fewer club sports to be a part of. We have just as many kids tomorrow as we do today, but they have fewer things to do to take up their time. This is the moment. This is the time, and you are the person to get this done. We are taking no prisoners as we move forward in this process. We are going after every child. Now, as we do that, I want you to think about a couple things. Number one, you are, you are the captain of your ship. You are the face of your program, but for most people, you are the face of your school. You are the person that they look to. You are the person that communicates with them. You are the person that shows them that you love them. You are the person that shows them that you care. You are the captain of your ship. And now is the time to be that captain. Now is the time to stand on deck and say, this is the direction we're headed. And I know we're going to get there together. People are looking to provide for you to provide answers. They're not looking for you to go, oh, I'm not sure what we should do. And well, I'm waiting to hear from my admin team. If you don't have the answer, say, I don't have the answer. But here's what I think we're, we're going to do. If you don't have the answer, say, I don't have the answer, but I've, I'm working on a plan. They're looking for a sense of leadership. They're looking for a sense of purpose. And they're looking for a sense of safety that someone's in control. You are the captain of your ship. It's time for you to step up and take control of the bridge. Now, everything we present today is different uh, for every person. Recruitment and retention is different for a high school choir director than it is for an elementary band director. It's different for a middle school orchestra teacher than it is for an, a general music teacher. Let this presentation to be a springboard for you, a springboard to move forward, um, and let this be an idea generator. If you see something on the screen or that I present that doesn't make sense or wouldn't work for you, just tweak it and fix it. This isn't written in stone. This is an ever-living, breathing curricula that I want you to take and use it in a way that's meaningful for you in gives you success. I want you to be solutions-based. I, I, you've got to understand and you've got to collect data. Your administration is flailing. Your fine arts department chair is flailing. Other teachers are flailing. What you've got to do is say, here's the solution I've created and here's the data that says it works. Here's the way I'm going to get kids enrolled and here's the data that says they're enrolling. So as you begin this process, everything you do, every communication you send out, every person you talk to, you collect data on, and you're solutions-based. Next, I want you to understand and, and be sure that every student is yours until proven otherwise. Well, Billy didn't sign up for choir. Yes, he did, unless you can prove to me he didn't. Sally didn't want to take music. Can you show me a registration sheet that says she didn't? Then she's signing up for music. Every student is mine until you can tell me otherwise. Because what's going to happen is many of your schools haven't even registered yet. And so they're going to have to plug and play kids wherever they fit. And unless they have evidence that says they shouldn't be music, then why wouldn't they be? If they don't have data that says they should be a part of your class, then you present them with data that says they should. Assume that every student is yours until proven otherwise and be relentless and unapologetic for pursuing every child. You know, the, the framework I like to think about it is, we know that music is good for kids, so stop apologizing for it. I want every kid in music. Why? Because it's good for kids. And if you want what's good for kids, put them in music. A doctor would never apologize. A doctor would never apologize for telling you to stop smoking, would they? Because it's good for you. A doctor would never apologize to tell you to lose weight, would they? No, because um, it's good for you. A doctor would never apologize to tell you to practice social distancing and wear a mask in these times of health concerns. No, they wouldn't do it because it's the right thing to do. Be relentless and do not, repeat, do not apologize for wanting what's best for kids. It's okay for a kid to not want to be in music. Well, no, it's not, but it's going to happen. But it's not okay for us to not fight for those kids because if we know that music's good for them, then we have to fight for them. We have to be willing to be unapologetic and relentless and ready. We don't take no for an answer. We just don't take it. Stop taking no for an answer. Now, I wanna give you a framework to think about recruiting and retention. And again, it's a framework and it's gonna be different for each and every one of you, but it's a system for you to think about. 
These are the five steps that we're going to go through today in a very systemic order. Now, those of you been a part of, well, any of my webinars or my writings, and I like to have fun and I like to write around the subject and I like to make jokes, but the bottom line is, I believe in being tactical and practical. I wanna provide real solutions to real problems in real time. So we're not gonna be ethereal today. I'm gonna to give you real steps that you can take in order that you should take them to provide real solutions in real time. Step one, you gotta collaborate. Before you say and do anything, you've gotta get everyone together and on the same team. And that means not just uh, your colleagues, but your parents and your students. Number two, you're gonna communicate, 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 and when you're done, I think we just might communicate some more. Three, motivate. We're going to provide rationale and reasons why people should choose music. Four, we're going to coordinate. We're going to make sure that everyone is on the same page and we're working in the same direction. And then last but not least, we're going to validate. We're going to make sure that everything we said that needed to happen is actually happening and that every child who is supposed to be in our group is actually registered for our group. Collaborate, communicate, motivate, coordinate, and then validate. So let's get started because man, do we have a lot to do. Step one, Recruitment and retention, step by step, baby. Time to start collaborating. So as you think about this, and as you start to create your process, you wanna work with the other music teachers in your district, your feeder teachers and your department. A unified voice is a more powerful voice. And frankly, if you have the wherewithal, you should get all of your music teachers together in your entire district and say, this is the plan of action I think we should take. And every document, every memo that you send, everything that you hand out, every form that you use should look and feel the same throughout the district. When you work together, you're way more powerful than when you work as one. Collaborate with everyone in your department, in your building, with your administration, and in your district. A unified voice is a more powerful voice. Number two, collecting collect all your resources and hold them and organize them in one place. Create a Google Drive for your entire district and let every teacher grab every document or every teacher in your department grab every document and they can alter it, put their spin on it, put their logo on it, put their school name on it, but collect them in a place and hold them in a place where they're accessible to everyone, including other teachers in your school. Uh, make sure that you share your plan before you start with the admin team and your fine arts coordinator. You wanna make sure number one, if they have any concerns, things you shouldn't say, and things you should say. But more than anything, you wanna know in advance what are their must-haves. In other words, let's say you wanna present them with, here's my list of kids that should be enrolled in choir this year. And they say, well, we're gonna need a student signature on that. Okay, I need to know that. I can do a virtual signature, I can do a real signature, they can sign on a screen, they can give a thumbs up and take a picture, they can hold up a sign and say, I'm, I want choir and text it to me. You tell me what you must have as a part of this process and what you can't have as a part of this process. Tell me what I should and must say and tell me what I can't say before you begin the process. There's always that belief that says, well, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Yeah, there is sometimes that's true, but this isn't one of those times. This is crisis time and you wanna collaborate with others to make sure that you're being a good team player. You wanna collaborate with your students, your boosters, and your parents. They, you are one person, and for many of you, your program, choir, band, orchestra, general music, maybe hundreds of kids. If you utilize parents, if you utilize boosters, if you utilize kids to break down the communication process and, and, and you, you give them not only specific tasks to do, but you give them specific deadlines and accountability measures, you're gonna make your life a lot more manageable. Um, while you're at home, and I know you're doing a lot of things um, online learning, you're already overwhelmed. And if you're not overwhelmed, just having a couple of kids in home and homeschooling your own kids is overwhelming. So use other people, collaborate with your student leaders, collaborate with your boosters, collaborate with your parents, but be specific in what you want them to do and give them deadlines to do it. You also have resources outside of this that you can collaborate. You can collaborate with Scott Lang. You can collaborate with your local music store. You can collaborate... <clears throat> Um, with local communal members. You can collaborate with a local restaurants. You can collaborate with other people. You can be as creative as you need to be, but collaborate. And then again, everything you come up with, just like we're doing here today, share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends, and get on social media and say, this is what I'm doing. This is a time in which we come together. This is not a time to play your solo. This is the time to be in an ensemble. 
This is not a time to play the lead. This is a time to play the harmony. This is not a time for melodies. This is a time for chorales in which we all speak with one voice. Share, share, share after you collaborate so everyone can benefit. Now I mentioned Be Part of the Music has resources. I'm gonna share just a couple of them with you. Please understand this is not a commercial for what we do, but many of you may or may not be aware of some of our resources. So for those of you who have kids coming to middle school um, and from elementary school, this would be a video that you would use and all of our videos are social media compliant. Uh, we, have L we have videos and we have text and data for students. We have text and data for administrators and we have videos, text and data for parents. This is a parent video for um, middle school students coming from their beginning experience. Man, it's been a long time since I've walked these hallways. Failed math there. Hey, my name's Jeremy Andorfer Lopez, and you might recognize me from a little bit of my work as a professional actor, but believe it or not, a long time ago, I went to school here. And I don't remember much, if anything, about middle school, but what I do remember are my music classes. Wow. I remember walking down these hallways a million times. I'd be hanging out in here with my music friends instead of practicing. In fact, this is where I met most of my friends. This was my space. This is where I came before school, during lunch, and after school. And this is where I felt safe, where I felt like I belonged. This is where my passion for music was created, fostered, and developed. I went on to play in high school. In fact, I was in multiple ensembles. But I don't play my instrument anymore. It's not the point. I don't play piano. Uh, music kept me busy and out of trouble. Music kept me away from drugs and alcohol, and it surrounded me with a ton of good kids. You know, some of the best memories I have were from music classes. In fact, some of the best friends I still have now were ones I met in middle school. And I didn't even know if I wanted to take music in middle school. You know, I wanted to take shop or something. <laughs> but you know, my mom said, you can do any of those things you want on your own. But music is the one thing that you need other people for. So do it now while you can. She was right. Man, middle school is where everything changes. Kids are exposed to all sorts of things and people, good and bad. It's where they develop their sense of identity and create habits. It's why it's so important that you choose music. Students involved with music have higher vocabularies or better readers, have higher test scores, lower dropout rates and have the lowest reported lifelong rates of drug and alcohol abuse. Lifelong. So why wouldn't you put your child in music? Bottom line, you want your child to be happy and successful. And that's what music does. Beyond that, it'll make them more confident and safer. Like, I don't play my instrument much anymore, but that's not the point. Music has made me the person I am today, both personally and professionally. Just something to think about. I love that video. Um, that's Jeremy Andorfer. He's a former student of mine that's now a professional actor. And um, they're just, uh, he's a really special guy. But what I want you to understand about that video is it does a very specific thing. And we're gonna talk about this in the communication section, which is it lowers fears. That we're so busy sometimes communicating information that we forget that fear is more powerful than knowledge. And that our first step in communicating is lower the barrier of fear so that people hear what we have to say. And so what you, heard, what you heard Jeremy talk about is, number one, kids in school are more successful. Number two, there's a lot of scary things that happen in middle school. And number three, if your kid is in music, those things won't happen to them. He's lowering fears, speaking parent to parent. So that's what it's about. It's about usually using and collaborating with all our resources that we have. This is a second one that I'm gonna share with you. Okay, you don't think you can do sports and music at the same time? You're crazy. I do sports and music. That's not all. I'm in scouts and involved in my church. I do tons of things, and none of them interfere with my music class. 
thing is, music's during the day, and sports are after school, so they don't conflict. I can do two sports and still be in music. You don't have to make a choice between sports and music. You can do both. Trust me, if I can do it, so can you. So make sure you're still part of the music. What I love about that is what we did, and by the way, that's Blake from Be Part of the Band, if you recognize him, and our high school videos follow Blake. He's now a singer in high school. Uh, he's an all-state trombone player. He's just ridiculously talented, and uh, just, um, a, I'm very close to him. I love him like he's my own. And, um, but the thing about that is, is we produce 10 commercials. We asked middle school teachers, what are the 10 reasons kids quit? And then we created 10 one-minute commercials to address those fears. My point in sharing those two things is that we have the resources for you to do. You collaborate with Be Part of the Music, collaborate with the, uh, your local music store, collaborate with your colleagues, but collaborate till you put together a package of materials that you're ready to communicate with that will address every concern to every child in every situation. The last thing I'll share with you is we have a Build Your Own Website program, and this is super, super, super slick. Um, you can build your own website in less than two minutes that demonstrates all the instruments. We have it for band and orchestra. But this is my favorite part coming up, is that after you create that, that website allows parents to communicate with you. So that as you're reaching out and saying, what instrument do you like? What instrument excites you? What do you want to choose? They can actually email you and there's validated documentation that they want to be in band. There's validated documentation they want to be in orchestra. And it's all there right in front of them. So we've not only provided the solution, it's not only free, but it, not, it communicates information, <clears throat> it lowers fears with the parent interviews, and then allows them to validate their choices. It's a one-stop shop for all. So step one, collaborate. Get everything and everyone together before you're ready to begin. Step two, communicate. Communicate, 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 communicate. First thing you need to know is number one, fear is more important than knowledge. If, if I'm scared, then I don't hear what you're saying. Well, I was going to join band, but I'm scared I'm not very good. I was going to join orchestra, but I'm scared I'll be last chair. I was going to join choir, but I'm scared because we really can't afford the choir robe fee. I'm scared I'm not going to be as good as the upperclassmen. It's not what I know. You can tell me everything, but if I'm scared, I become tone deaf to your message. People become scared for musical reasons, for academic reasons. I can't, I've got too much to do my freshman year. And they become now scared because of financial reasons. With unemployment soaring and money being tight, fear is financial too. It's important that the very first thing you do in every communication is that you lower fears. I know in this time of uncertainty and school out, you have a lot of questions. I'm here with answers, I have solutions. I know in these times that budgets are tight. Please know that no child will be excused from music because they can't afford music. I know you're overwhelmed because you didn't get your fourth quarter curriculum, you have to make it up. We are gonna have study hall once a week if you're struggling. We're gonna provide you with a study buddy. We'll get you a tutor. The point is my first step is acknowledging fear. My second step is providing a solution for that fear. And then my third step is talking about the benefits of the program. You've got to communicate to all stakeholders, parents, administrators, department chairs, uh, if, um, district office personnel, as well as the students. Use existing technology and infrastructure. If you use Infinite Campus, you're good, use it. If you use Remind, you're good, you use it. If you use Band, which is a wonderful solution, who's a sponsor of ours, you're good, you use it. If you use um, email, use it. If you use Charms, use it. The point is, now's not necessarily a time to try out a new technology. If you're comfortable and you can do it, more power to you, but use the infrastructure that's built in place and focus on the non-musician. So if you look at the next doc or the next bullet point, there are three areas that, of people you focus on. Number one, the confirmed. Number two, the questioned. And number three, the unknown. Number one, the confirmed. These are kids you're pretty sure are signed up for your classes. All you need to do is drop them a quick email or look at a spreadsheet and go, yep, they're signed up. I'm good. That's probably 65 to 70% of your course load. And the reason it's important you focus on them first, even to go, well, shouldn't I go after the unknowns? No. You should go after the confirmed first because what you're doing is building an army. You're building an army of people who can then help you communicate and you're building momentum. Well, you know, your best friend Sally signed up. I've confirmed it. Are you sure you don't want to be in choir? 
I don't know if you know this, but our numbers are up 20% next year. Are you sure you don't want to? You want to focus on the confirmed first. They're quick and easy check boxes that you can fill while you build an army. And frankly, it'll make you feel good and give you momentum moving forward. The second thing you want to focus on are um, the question. These are kids that you thought should be in, in choir band or orchestra, but they're not. Maybe it was a scheduling snafu. Maybe they didn't fill out their scheduling. Maybe it's a computer malfunction. Um, maybe they just changed their mind after they filled it in. That's the next step. You reach out to them and go, Billy, you're a junior and you didn't re-sign up for choir. Why? I really need you, Billy. Are you sure now in this time of, of transition, this is when you want to give up music? I can fix that for you, Billy. You want to reach out to the question and you want to keep them in your queue of contact so that you're going to continue to reach out with them. And we'll talk about that how in just a little bit. And then number three, the unknown. Those are the people that you just don't know. And that falls into two categories. Number one, um, the category that uh, uh, number one is you're an eighth grader and I've me never met you. I see that you're an eighth grade band. I had that spreadsheet, but you're not in high school band. I see that you're an eighth grade choir, eighth grade orchestra, but you're not registered. And I don't know you, but I need to reach out and find out why you're not there. And then the other unknown is who are kids on your campus that now need something to do that weren't in band choir or orchestra before? Um, this would be the time to go get those kids, um, the unknown. And, you know, for me, what I used to do is, uh, as part of my leadership application, I'd tell my leaders, go find me one student who you think might be a good candidate to be a member of the color guard and go find me one friend out there who's not in band that you think should be in band. And they would give me, they had to provide their name, their email, their phone number and proof that they contacted them. And then I would follow up. And if I could pick up 10 or 12 new color guard members every year, that's 46 new color guard members over four years. If I could pick up one possible student from every kid who filled on application, that's an additional music class every year. Now, does every kid sign up when I contact them? No, but I do convert about 10 unknowns a year. 10 un unknowns over a four year period is 40 additional kids to my program. You wanna focus on the confirmed first, check box them off, build your army to contact others. You wanna focus on the question second, people that you know, and why aren't they on there? And then you focus on the unknown third. I also want you to think about allocating some resources to the project. If you don't have it, go to your principal. If you don't have it, go to your PTO. I, you know, I was talking to um, years ago, one of the teachers who taught my son, students, and I gave him a recruitment kit from being part of the music. I said, use this. He goes, oh, I wanted to buy one of those, but I didn't have a budget. And I looked at him, I said, you know, my wife's the treasure of the PTO, right? And he said, oh, no, I didn't. I said, you know, they have $42,000 in their account, right? No. I go, if you ask for $100, they'll give it to you. Your administration, your PTO, your boosters, or just your own discretionary funds, if you have a middle school, high school program that has access to that, consider allocating a budget um, for swag, um, for um, carrot material. We're going to talk about that in, in just a little bit uh, down the road. But consider allocating a budget. And then last but not least, as you communicate, as you communicate more and as you communicate even more, don't take no for an answer. Oh, you're not, are you sure you don't want to be in my class? Yes. All right. I'll contact you next week in case your mind's changed. I'll email you next week. I'm going to have Billy reach out to you on Thursday. I'm going to have Sally contact you. I'll be back in touch in July. You just don't take no. You'll, there is no reason to take no. It's just that simple. And there's no reason to take no. Other things you want to think about communication-wise in terms of step-by-step. -step. Number one, call to come first and then enlist them to get their help. We talked, talked about building the army. Anyone who's on the bubble, you want to communicate with every three to five days. You can use text. You can use email. You can use a student. You can do it through an Instagram post. You can do it through Facebook. You can do it through the band website. But you want to touch base with them every three to five days and just say, hey, Turning your rosters, you sure? Hey, why, you know, we just picked up 10 more kids. You want to, you know, uh, it's in the game of college recruiting. They contact the recruits every single day because they know that someone else is. You know, if College A wants this football, basketball player, they're contacting him every day and sharing, I have a plan for you. I have a place for you. We're excited about you. We want you. And, and I'll be honest with you, I, I don't really remember this, but uh, uh, one of the students, uh, Blake's mom, was in my band, and um, she says that she was going to leave band, and she ended up being my drum major, um, and going on to be a music major and a band director, and she says she told me that, and I waited a couple hours, and I went and tracked her down, and found her, and said, I can't do band without you, so I need you to do band, 
And I don't really remember that, but she said that had a profound effect on her that she, I needed her, that I needed her as, as someone who's searching for a place and an identity as a teenager, someone said, I need you. And I want you to be a part of this organization and you're important to me. And so there are lots of ways that you can say that, but you want to be doing that on a regular basis. For the unknown, you want to be a little less aggressive and a little less threatening. You want to communicate about once a week. You want to communicate with them. But if they're younger, you want to communicate with their parents. Send them one of our parent newsletters. Send them one of these videos and say, just thinking about you. Uh, send them um, a note saying, um, you're going through the roster and notice some of their friends were signed up and you didn't want their child to miss out. Send them a note saying, as a parent, you're concerned about their child being successful. But the bottom line is you want to communicate with them. And when you communicate, you want to provide an actionable item in every communique. Just respond yes if you'd like my child to sign up. Click here if you think your child should be inquired. Send me a text with a note saying, please enroll my child here. Um, email an administrator at this email address. Leave a voicemail at this. In every single email, you want to provide an actionable item that allows them to not only enroll their child, but then opt out, opt out of um, getting future communication because their child's already enrolled in music. Use as much multimedia as possible. Keep it brief. Long seven paragraph emails don't convince anybody. Multimedia matters and multimedia of your kids, pictures of your kids laughing, pictures of your kids smiling, pictures of your kids performing. Look, it's great to show a clip of a DCI video to a kid that understands it, but to a kid that's in eighth grade, that's gonna intimidate the daylights out of them. They went, oh, I remember Billy. Oh my God, he's in band now? Oh, I was in band when he was in eighth grade and I was in seventh grade, or I remember Billy and now he's, I'm gonna be in band. You know, oh, I remember her, that's Johnny's older sister. I didn't know she was in the color guard. Man, I wasn't gonna do band, but maybe I'll do color guard. Um, you wanna use multimedia, because that's the way kids operate today, but you wanna use multimedia that they have experience with and people they have experience with. And then host an online meeting question Q&A session. Um, you can use Zoom, you can use Facebook Live, you can use a, a chat room, you can, there's lots of solutions, Microsoft Teams, there's the band app. Um, but you can use any of those uh, that allow you to communicate and talk to people um, in real time and address their questions. Um, you can also host online meeting with kids if they're age appropriate, but understand that it genuinely takes, they say, between seven and 13 touches to get someone from inaction to action. Whether you're Target, whether you're Macy's, whether you're um, the Kardashians, whether you're um, a social media influencer or you're a multinational uh, business, they contact you seven to 13 times before you're triggered into action. It may be you see something on Instagram and then they hit you up on Facebook and then it's a browser ad while you're reading CNN.com and then you get an email from them and then you get another Instagram post and seven to 13 touches to get someone from inaction to action. So how do you do that? I know it's overwhelming, but remember, you're gonna do this as a team, you're gonna do it together, and all the resources are done for you. They're on our site. Here's just one way to look at it. This is an actual campaign uh, that I built uh, of how to recruit a kid or retain a kid who's coming into high school that may or may not be signed up for band choir orchestra. And again, you'll see it's, I think, 13 touches, but in a variety of ways. It's not 13 phone calls to a parent. It's not th 13 emails to a kid. It's not 13 Facebook posts. It's 13 different touches to 13 different people in 13 different types of ways that results in each person getting three to seven touches. This is an influencer campaign designed to transition a kid from not being in your group to being in your group. Now, keep in mind, you may have someone uh, opt out at letter four, at block four, present in the class. Yep, hey guys, everyone signed up for band. I've got the roster checklist. Yep, you're all in band. We're good to go. They're opt out of the system. They don't need anything else. What this is designed to do is not only inform and get kids to validate and commit to the activity, but it's designed to whittle down my focus pool that I now have 
250 kids in my band program and 100 eighth graders. So I have 350 kids. Well, if I can get a roster sheet or go to a class and confirm they're enrolled for band, they check it off. And now I only have 50 people to concentrate on that didn't sign up for band. So I went from a pool of, of people to communicate with from 350 to 50. I went from 350 people um, on someone else's team and none on my team to 250 people or 300 people on my team and 50 not on my team. Your, your, it's called a funnel, a pipeline. This is what this is. Your funnel, your pipeline may look different than this. It may feel different than this, but all that matters is that you have a system. You have a system of who to communicate, what to communicate, how to communicate, how to coordinate, how to validate, and then remove them from your pipeline. This is an actual, actual funnel, a click-based funnel that you could use if you started your own business. And that's what we're doing here. We're recruiting for our business. And this is available, again, if you download the slide deck at bpotm.org. All right, fi finalizing the communication part. You have to be willing to communicate more than you want to larger groups than you normally would in ways that you're not used to doing. You know, we sent you this, uh, um, we sent you this uh, email blast on Tuesday. Then I mentioned it in my blog on Wednesday. Then we sent you a reminder Thursday and you got a final blast Friday with a link on Friday. Do I like sending four emails a week? No, but I know how full your inboxes are and I know how crazy your lives are. And that's what's required to be successful. And I want to be here to help you, but in order to help you, I got to get through to you. You want to be there to help your students, but in order to help your students, you have to get through to your students. Be willing to communicate more than you want to larger groups than you want in ways that you're not used to doing. Make empathy and understanding the focus of every communication. Don't clip and copy 15 music advocacy stats. People don't care about stats. They care about their children. Seniors don't care about stats. Seniors care about their senior year. You have to communicate in a way that understands where they're at and gives empathy for what they're facing. Juniors, I know you missed prom. Seniors, I know you missed your senior concert. I know that there's a lot on the line here, but let me tell you, I feel your pain and I'm committed to doing everything I can to get that plaque to you in a way that celebrates your four years. Juniors, I'm committed to giving you the best senior year possible. I understand what your fears are and I will make sure I'm, that you have the best experience possible. I'm showing empathy and understanding in every single communication. And then never be ashamed to advocate what's in the best interest of a kid. It's okay if a student says, I'm not doing Dan, no matter what, okay. You're making a wrong choice and I love you and I appreciate you and I want what's best for you and I respect your decision, but I want you to know I don't agree with it. And when you change your mind, just know I want you back. And when you have questions, I want you to know I'm here to answer them. And when you have thoughts and ideas, I want you to know I'm a sounding board for you. But I believe music is what's best for you. And I believe that you might be lost without it. Um, so I'm never going to stop communicating with you. And I'm never going to stop telling you what I believe the right thing is. And if you tell me to back off, I'll back off. But just know in the back of your mind, I'm never giving up on you. Never be ashamed to advocate for what's in the best interest of kids. Step three, motivate. Step one, step one, collaborate. Step two, communicate. Step three, motivate. It's just really simply this. We want to create carrots now for future commitments. So what we want to do is we want to create things that we can use to incentivize kids to make the commitment now. And they can be things just as simple as, I'll take care of your schedule change for you. You don't have to stand in line. It may be you register for band. I'm going to send you a band t-shirt in advance. It may be I'm going to put your name on our commitment website. I'm going to get you a senior study buddy. We're going to send you a coupon for a free ice cream cone. Uh, I'm going to give you 5% off your band fees if you commit in the month of April. Here's just a bunch of ideas. I don't like to read to people. Um, but the bottom line is one of the most landmark studies um, in American psychology is the marshmallow study. And you probably know of it, in which they brought in um, uh, hundreds of kids into a room and they put a marshmallow on the table. And they said, oh, I have to leave the room now. And if, you, if you're able to leave that marshmallow there, when I come back in 15 minutes, um, I will have two marshmallows for you to eat. 
And the overwhelming majority, and I really did want to look up the actual number, but I forgot. Um, the overwhelming majority of students ate the marshmallow now, even though they know they would get double the reward down the road. They wanted the feel good now rather than the feel good later. We know this is just a part of, of us as human beings, but we also know this is a part of our American culture. Feel good now. I want to buy this product now so I can feel good. I'll worry about paying for it later. I want to eat this now. I won't worry about my weight gain later. Um, America and our children that we're raising, my own included, are um, current carrot now. And so if we recognize that, we want current carrots for future commitment. And it can be, it can be non-monetary. It can be just, I'll put your name on a website. I will make sure that everyone knows that you have signed up early. I will give you extra credit. I will, it can be anything. It can be just a high five and a distant hug because it's a COVID world. But you want to provide an incentive for people now if they'll commit to being in your group later. Provide the carrot now for future commitments later. And if you do that, what you're really doing is you're creating a community. You're creating an emotional connection between the program and the student. Oh, I got, I got a t-shirt. I'm a part of that team. You know, in this time of, of isolation uh, and loneliness. And I will tell you, um, my son's been, my kid's been home for 29 days now because we're in a year-round calendar. So they were last in school on February 29th. Then they had a two-week uh, spring break. Then they, it was a week of school's going to be postponed. And then on week four, they said, we're canceling school. So next week will be the fifth week of my students being home. And yesterday was the first day I got a, a little bit nutty. I'm working seven days a week because I, I don't know what day it is anymore. Um, and I told my wife, I said, okay, it's just, uh, it's getting a little bit nutty. I, I, need, to, I need to do something different. And um, and fortunate, uh, um, fortunate, uh, um, the, the lady who gives our kids uh, piano lessons also owns a hair salon. So she did our piano lesson and she cut our hair. And I feel like a new man because I talked to someone who wasn't in the four walls of my house and I had a normal experience. And I thought about something other than COVID-19 for an hour and a half while my, my boys and I sat in our front lawn and got our hair cut. It was honest to God, life-changing. I know it's crazy, but people are looking for a sense of continuity, a sense of community, and a sense of connectivity. And the choir t-shirt does that. A bumper sticker does that. I get, to, I, get to, I get to be part of the Zoom chat and see what next year's show is, and no one else does because I'm a part of the inside team. I'm a part of the cool kids. That does something for kids. You're, that's what we're trying to do by providing carrots. We're trying to get them to feel like they're a part of something. And this is what people are starting to create. There is only so many episodes of Tiger King that you can watch. There's only so many. It's only so much craziness that you can watch. There's only <laughs> so much Netflix that you, <coughs> you can watch without going insane. And I'm getting to that point where now I want real connection with real people. Um, I don't want to binge watch TV. I want to talk to you. Um, maybe that these webinars are more for me than they are for you. Maybe. And then last but not least, um, parents are, are motivated by the love of their child. That when we're doing this, understand that what we're doing is not about making our band choir orchestra programs better. It's about making their boys and girls and, and children better. Uh, that's what parents care about. And remember that fear is more powerful than knowledge. Everything we do, everything we do is about lowering fears lowering fears. Everyone is scared. So we know that we need to validate. Step four, validate. This is critical because this is the, the data and the proof that when you go to say, here's my list of everyone needs to be enrolled, they say, well, why do you say they need to be enrolled? Well, here's my validation. I got, I hear all the emails from my build my own website project. Here's everyone's responses from the parents. Here's every email that said they want their child enrolled. Here's their form sheet. Here's their click sheet. Here's the data sheet that I, I collected. The point is you've got to be able to validate. And there's many different ways to do that. Here's just a couple, Google Forms, email, text, snail mail, website, voicemail, video chat, text. Literally take a picture that says, I want my child in band and text it to me. It's not that hard. Um, have the child say, I want to be an orchestra and send it to me in a text or in, in any other way that's appropriate or uh, for the age level that you're dealing with. Um, and you can enlist your, your student leaders to contact kids. But the point is, you are going to need some documentation. If not for just yourself, you're going to need it for your administrative team. 
Um, use whatever form your administrators are willing to accept and remind them that you're trying to solve a problem for them. You know, that when you walk in and say, here's my, uh, my, my 138 sheets of kids who should be, and they're like, we're not doing 138 schedule changes. Listen, you know, we talked about this at the beginning, uh, Mr. Principal, and I, I'm, you can do these over the summer. I'm just trying to save you a line of 135 parents the first week of school. I'm trying to save you the trouble of mailing out 135 wrong schedules. I'm trying to save the trouble of balancing your schedule in July only to find out it's deeply imbalanced because of all of these kids that were in the wrong space. You want to make sure for the parent, I'm trying to solve the problem of you having to come down in a COVID world. I'm trying to solve the problem of your student missing the first week of school because they weren't in the right class. I'm trying to solve the problem of you um, uh, not miss being able to part of band camp or choir experiences or being on our email list because you didn't sign up for the class. You're trying to solve problems, not create problems. So you want to document, 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 validate, validate, validate in hopes of not only giving yourself data, backup and proof, but to solve problems. Now we have some of those documents for you. Again, it's not meant to be a uh, commercial, but the, we have parent letters that you can copy and paste, put on your letterhead and send out. We have certificates that the student can sign and it proves they wanted to be in your group. We have forms, we have websites, we have everything you need at bepartofthemusic.org and it's all free. We have, I believe, um, 37 videos, no, it's in the 40 videos and 36 documents. And just to be clear, um, they're all in Spanish too. Es en español, para tú, es muy importante to communicate in bilingual uh, um, uh, idiomas. Si, sí? es muy bien. We have these documents for you, so please use them as a resource. Step five, coordinate. Coordinate, coordinate, coordinate. So what does that look like? Coordinate means that you want to consider a post-COVID world in terms of everything uh, that it means for your program. And that may mean cleaning chairs after every class. That means what do you do with instruments that are out there right now that you haven't collected? What about uniforms that could be infected? Can we have a wind ensemble, uh, a symphonic band of 75 in the same room? Maybe we need to, it needs to be wind ensembles. You need to consider that world and coordinate with your building coordinators. You need to coordinate with your admin team, your scheduling team, your fine arts coordinators, your superintendents. You need to coordinate with your music colleagues, your other teachers and say, what's our approach in band? What's our approach in orchestra? What's our approach in choir? Do we need to be looking at wind ensembles or small ensembles? What does that mean for staffing? What does that mean for setup? And you know, my son is a percussionist. Can he share mallets? Do they need to disinfect the mallets after every class? What about the timpani? What about the snare drum? What about the drum set? He plays keyboard. What about the keyboard? What about tubas? Do you have enough tubas for every single kid to have their own tuba and mouthpiece? Do you have enough bassoons to have every kid have their own bassoon and mouthpiece? Most programs don't. And you need to start thinking about that. And your principal may not have an answer for it, but you better have a question. Uh, you better have the question for him to say, how am I going to handle this? And here's different ways. Um, you also want to pre prepare and execute um, summer communications and parents so that they understand in advance what are the changes that might be had and what are the changes that are going to be had and how can they best prepare for them. Uh, my own son, uh, I haven't heard yet. I can't imagine he's going to have band camp. And if they have band camp, I can't imagine they're going to put 10 kids in a room. That's going to mean a cost increase. I can't imagine they're going to put, you know, 50 kids on a bus for six hours to drive to band camp. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine a lot of things right now about band camp. Um, so, you know, that communication in advance uh, as, as, as parents prepare their summer schedules. I'm on summer break with my kids. We could pick up and go somewhere tomorrow if we weren't on lockdown. Uh, I'm on summer break with my kids, or I'm planning for summer break right now. And that was easy to do when I knew what my summer was going to look like, but I don't know now. So can you tell me? Um, these are things that we want to do. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And then communicate with the, the people that surround your program, staff, arrangers, coordinators, choreographers, um, um, people that you buy instruments from, people that you rent instruments from, people that you buy music from. Uh, communicate with your music vendors. Communicate with your local music and ed reps that come to your building each and every day. Let them know, listen, I'm way up. I need you to stock books. Listen, I'm going to need, I think, more trumpets because we've been sharing and we can't do them more. Listen, I might need mouthpieces next year. Um, listen, I'm in a quandary. I don't know how to deal with a bassoon. Tell me, give me solutions. Do you have thoughts? Do you have a rental program for bassoons? I don't know what to do. 
with your staff arrangers, look, we might be down. I need you to thin out the arrangements. Listen, we probably aren't going to have band camp. I need you to water the parts, the parts from a grade five to a grade four because our, our rehearsal time is going to be cut in half. Listen, I can't give you numbers for doc books yet. I just can't do it. I don't know it yet. Um, communicate. They're scared too. Their income's on the line too. You know, let your motivational leadership speaker know if you'll be coming to their building in July. Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know what it looks like for his world either. So they are a part of your world and they're a part of your family in good times and in bad. So it's important that you communicate with them in these times as well. Some other kind of final thoughts about coordinating is you want to make sure um, that you're preparing a completed roster for each class in alphabetical order for your admin team. You want to break it down by year and submit it to your department chair, your counseling staff, and your admin team before you go for the summer. Doing scheduling changes is not a quick process. And then on top of that, they have to balance the class loads. They have to balance the entire schedule. And they have to do a conflicts matrix. I did that when I was an administrator, but more importantly, my brilliant, beautiful wife was the guidance department chair. She would tell me, get it to me in April. I'll get it done by July. Every kid will be in the right place. But do it in a way, here's fifth grade, here's sixth grade. Here's my freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, alphabetical, sorted by student number because that's how they sort their course load or alphabetical. Ask them, how do you want it? My wife's school, it was, she had freshman A through L. That was her assignment. So I knew A through L freshman, here's schedule changes. Oh, M through Z, that goes to Sally Smitherwacker. Okay, I'm gonna give that to her. And Billy DeMaffafoffer, I'm gonna give him juniors B through L. If you know what they do, then you can give them what they need, but you want that in their hands as soon as humanly possible. And then provide a list of needs to your administrator. I need more instruments. I need more staffing. I need facilities. I need instructional materials. I need a bigger budget. Don't demand. Do not demand. Request, inform, engage, and ask. Don't demand. And then ask your admin team what they need from you and offer to help in a way that's meaningful for them. I know I've provided a list of things I need and, and things that you can do to help me, but now I wanna know how I can help you. Now I know, wanna know what I can do for you. Now I wanna know how the band choir and the orchestra can serve the school. You need me to come in and cover a day so you can have a day off, I'm here. I got my admin certificate. You need me to walk the halls, I'm here, I'll do it. You need me to cover a class for the first six weeks, I'll do it. You need me to call students and find out whether or not registered and what classes I want, I'll do it. I'm a part of your team. You know, being a music teacher, you're a virtual administrator. You are the face of that school. You are the face of your program, but you're the face of that community. And it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And you've got to make sure that you go back the other way in that street because there's going to come a time when two people ask for something and you're one of them and they're going to remember what you did for them and what you did for your kids and what you did for your school and you're going to come up on top. But more than anything, it's the right thing to do. And then the rat last thing when it comes to coordinate, uh, not my favorite politician, but one of my favorite quotes, uh, trust, but verify. You want to go in over the summer and look and make sure everyone's enrolled that should be enrolled. You know, I had a situation, not when my wife was my guidance counselor, where my numbers were down by 20 kids that I was flummoxed. How could this be? What did I do? I'm a bad teacher. Oh my God, I'm horrible. And I want to find out why. And they said, well, those kids chose that. And I'm like, I can't believe that. So I went and I looked at the blue course request sheets, you know, the one the kids fill out in pencil. I looked at every single one for the entire school. And all 20 kids had banned as their number one choice. But there was a class that was brand new that the admin team wanted to make that was one of their other three electives. And they gave the directive that these kids, if, they, if anyone chooses that, put them in that class first. And I went nuts. And every one of the 20 kids was put back in band because it was their number one choice. I had to verify that these kids didn't choose my class. And I was able to prove them with data and validate that they chose me first. I just made a full copy of the document, went to the kid and said, you were put in a different class. Go see your counselor. And all 20 kids were back in my class. Validate. Remember folks, it's a system. Don't be overwhelmed with giving you everything you need. Collaborate, communicate, motivate, coordinate, and validate. Collaborate with your colleagues, fine arts, admin team, and fellow music teachers. Communicate with every stakeholder, administrators, teachers, parents, students. Motivate, provide incentives now for future commitment. 
coordinate all of your resources with all of your professional community and the people that are impacted by what you're doing and validate with data that everything you said is true and everything that needs to be done was actually done. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you within three years, we have an exploded music education. It's no one's fault but our own. We have no one to blame but ourselves. We have to stand up and be accountable. We can't whine. We can't complain. We can't compare to what everyone else. We got to go after every single kid. Until you prove to me that that kid's not my kid, he's my kid. Until you prove to me he doesn't want to be in my group, then he's going to be in my group. Until you prove to me he's not going to be in music, then by goodness, he's going to be in music. This is my time. This is my program. And it's what's right for kids. If in three years we haven't grown music education, we've got no one to blame but ourselves. It's no one's fault but our own. So get fired up and don't take no for an answer. Uh, before we leave, we also want to make you aware of Leadership University. Um, we have been overwhelmed by this. We have, um, uh, we have over um, 3,000 schools as of this morning, about 3,100 schools. Now you think about that. that's a serious number. 3,100 schools potentially impacting over 450,000 kids. Um, it's ridiculous. It is available literally five through 12. There's videos, there's uh, written text, there's PDFs, and then there's a chat board. If I were a fifth grader and I was a fourth grader, I would just have them watch the videos. If I had a middle schooler, maybe videos and read the text. If I'm a, a high school, maybe videos, read the text and do the PDF. And then if I'm, if my leadership team collaborate and collect them all and do the leadership application processing, you're done. The point is you can layer this curricula to suit whatever need that you have. It's a joinsll.com. It is 100% free join sll.com um, for leadership university i also want to thank our generous sponsors the folks at alfred band music and arts music for all my music staff smart music thomas infield of vienna and uh, world projects um we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them and please uh, when you think of be part of the music uh think of these folks because they help make it happen and then last but not least um, there's my contact information. Uh, it's been overwhelming. There'll be over uh, 500 emails today after this webinar. Uh, folks who couldn't get in and were upset and folks who got in and have questions. I respond to every email, every single one. If you talk to me face to face, I wouldn't turn my back on you and ignore you. If you talk to me via email, I won't ignore you. If you want to find me, I'm at scott at scottlang.net. You can find all of our resources at bepartofthemusic.org. We're at facebook.com forward slash bepartofthemusic. And I and that Twitter at the more you give and be part of the music is Twitter at the more you give. I want to uh, end this webinar by thanking each and every one of you for all that you do for music education um, and everything that you do for your students. I know you're overwhelmed. I know you are. And I know you're nervous and I know you're scared and I am too. Um, but we can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond to it. We will be back next week um, with another webinar. Um, we'll announce that on Tuesday. Enroll on Tuesday night. Um, our webinars fill up quick, but more than anything, we ask that you share them with your colleagues. Um, we will share it on Facebook Live again. Um, and we will share them in, in videos. Even if you don't get in the room, we do send you the link and your professional development uh, to certificate after. I'm going to close the webinar now um, with uh, wishes of happiness, 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 and health to you and your families. I'm going to hit the stop record. I'm going to hit the stop share. And I'm going to respond to questions in the chat box. Good luck, everyone. God bless. And let's go get every kid to be part of the music.